Hello, my name is Alistair. I'm a director here at Droit Soap Factory in Chorley, Lancashire. We've been making glycerin soap for over a hundred years. And this week I'm going to show you the operation of one of our manual stamping machines. This is one of our stamping machines. They're around 100 years old. Um, they came from Germany when we uh, were based there in the 1920s uh, before the factory moved to Chorley in 1937. They're cast iron construction made with a, a table, a structure at the top to hold a moving arm, a part here that moves up and down vertically and then clamps at the bottom to clamp in a mould for stamping the soap. Now the operation of this is by foot pedal. Uh, the operator pushes down with the foot pedal until the safety handles are engaged. Pulling back the safety handles allows the foot pedal to carry on and the stamping motion to continue. As you can see, as I push the pedal, the central column moves up and down vertically. And that is a very important part of the operation because the way that the mould is designed is for the collar to hold the soap in place and a top and bottom die to move uh, up and down um, and that stamps what we call the billet or the soap piece into the final shape. And I'll show you that in a little bit more detail here. This mould is our 150 shape. It's our classic glycerin soap number 151 that is stamped today. As you can see, the die part is engraved, which will engrave or deboss or emboss in this case, a logo or a word or whatever into the soap. So on one side it will say says glycerin. On the other side it says droid. There's quite a lot of pressure required to stamp a soap like this. <clears throat> um, although glycerin soap is typically a little softer than a milled soap, we still need to um, may, uh, finish the product so that it's hard in use. You don't want it to be too soft. Um, if it's too soft it won't mould properly and also when you use it it will disappear too quickly. Glycerin soaps will always use up a bit faster than a normal milled soap because a glycerin soap, one of the ways that it works is that glycerin, which is in our soap about 10% of the total soap, is uh, a moisturizing, has moisturizing properties. It absorbs or takes water with it uh, as it's absorbed into the skin, which obviously is moisturizing. Um, but that does mean that the structure of the soap is a little softer than a normal milled soap which has uh, a lot of soap in it, as opposed to glycerin, which is normally taken out of the, the process. So as you can see, there are, in this particular soap, um, there is wording on both sides. The bottom die part is dropped into the mold. This part is called the collar, and this part is called the top die. The top die fits into the stamping machine with this uh, post here, which is clamped in place. And as you can see, it fits perfectly into the collar. But it's also incredibly important that it moves up and down in a very vertical way. 
if I, I can drop it gently, you can see that the air that is trapped in the die part is gently pushed away from the uh, it was, it was pushed out rather by the weight of the top. If there was um, if it was too loose in there, it would just drop very quickly. If it's too tight, it wouldn't move really at all. Uh, so it's critical that the part that is moving, this top die part, is fits very neatly into the, the collar and moves up and down in a very controlled and regular way. Uh, the operator places the billet. I'll get a billet. The operator places the billet into the die part. This is actually a billet from a different shape, so it doesn't quite fit in. But as you can see, this is not rounded in any way. It's not debossed or whatever. Uh, but it would be pushed into the, or dropped into the die, to the mould, and then the operator then uses the foot pedal to push the top die part down, squashing the soap, and then as the operator then, as the um, counterbalance weights swing back, a little peg post pushes up the, the bottom die, and pushes this out and then the operator takes that away and snaps the next one. So the setup process for putting the mould into the setting the mould into the stamping machine is to first put the collar in place and then clamp it with these two clamps on either side. Drop down the um, bottom die part and then insert the top die part into the machine like so. A lot of care has to be taken to line everything up very neatly. So this becomes a very skilled part of the operation, which is to gradually tighten the bolts as you center and try, you're trying to center the top die part constantly so that when it's in operation, you can push a lot down with a lot of power without the top die part damaging the collar. Once everything is clamped in place, operation can proceed. Here we see the foot pedal that the operator uses to stamp the soap. It's on a swinging arm, which is attached to this counterbalance at the top with a large axle. So there is swinging motion here. The swinging motion makes the little uh, post here move up and down. It's all machined carefully into the cast iron. This is steel. Uh, and this connection changes the pushing motion from the operator into the vertical motion for the stamp. The safety handles click into the side here and they're designed to stop the operation of the uh, stamping machine for safety reasons. Here we see the central post moving up and down, carefully machined in to the, the chassis of the whole stamping machine, all bolted together, 
And as you can see, this is carefully machined so that it has a very neat and smooth vertical action. This allows the top die part to always uh, drop into the collar in a very accurate way. This base plate is made from stainless steel. It's perfectly level. Everything is leveled up so that you can again can ensure that when the top die part is in place, it will always be vertical and hitting won't hit the sides of the collar. So there we have it, our manual soap stamping machine made in at least the at least a hundred years old and still works well. Needs a bit of care and tension, of course, like all old machines do. And we have other old machines in the factory, so we'll try and produce some more videos discussing them in the future. And thanks very much for watching. <laughs>